We've all witnessed moments of uncontrolled road rage when stressed out motorists snap during their daily commutes. Now, psychologists are witnessing the rise of a new, even more startling phenomenon. It's being called lycra rage, where spandex-clad cyclists are subconsciously seen as less than human, and it's resulting in them being run down and killed in record numbers. Here's Tom Tilley's investigation. It's 7am, I'm at Centennial Park, and I'm about to roll with Sydney's oldest cycling club on some of this city's most brutal roads. Hey, guys. Hey, Tom. All right. I'm on the front of the bunch. OK, guys, we'll be travelling down through the airport tunnel, so let's just make sure we get our lane changes clear. We'll be in the middle lane to go through the tunnel to be safe. Have a look at this. Does this make you scared for the cyclists or angry that they're there? It's not the most leisurely place for a ride chain. Dangerous for cycling. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Like in a Commodore back there? Yep. Not too happy? He's not too happy. That's the way it is. Nothing we can do about it, you know? Here we go. Oh, that didn't feel good. Cars and cyclists have never been a great mix. The hatred is real, and no greater hatred than for cyclists wearing lycra. People talk about how many points can you get for running them over. Darren Hinch called them famously cockroaches on wheels. All right, and those are just the words, not the actions. Lycra is like a red flag to a bull. So the lycra can trigger a different reaction? Absolutely. Does that concern you? Only because it concerns the, the safety of the people who are wearing the lycra, because they are just as human as anyone else. Australia, I've got a confession to make. I'm a cyclist, and I wear lycra. And I'm not the only one. This is a sight you'll see all around Australia. But something about what we wear puts a target on our back. Aaron! To be blunt, when we're on the road, too many of you want to run us down. You. And I'm on a mission to find out why. I've come to Melbourne's Monash University to meet Alexa Delbosk. Her groundbreaking research reveals the logic behind lycra rage, that many drivers see cyclists as subhuman. What do you think lycra represents to drivers? Oh, I suppose it, for some drivers it's a red flag to wave in their face of, of here's this entitled person in my way. Amongst people who don't ride a bike themselves, more than half of them saw people riding bikes as less than fully human. That absolutely shocked me when I read your research. 55% of drivers who don't cycle hey. see cyclists as less than human, someone like me, less than a full human being. Yeah. And they'll, they'll sit there with a the scale and say, you know, here's a fully evolved human, here's an ape or a bug, and they'll go, hmm, cyclists may be around here. Wow. And you might say, oh, it's a joke, they're taking the piss. But the people who rated cyclists as less than fully human were twice as likely to admit in a survey that they had used their car to threaten cyclists or thrown objects at cyclists or deliberately tried to block cyclists with their car. So maybe it's just a joke, but people who make those jokes are more likely to be people who are actually out there threatening and hurting cyclists. Wow, there's a big truck. Okay. You feel it suck in the air. And what is it about lycra in particular that really flares people's tempers? 
I think it's because that's the stereotype of what a cyclist is in Australia. It's still not mainstream enough for people to necessarily know other people who ride their bike every day. Uh, what we see on the roads more often is middle-aged man in Lycra with a helmet hunched over, racing fast, and in the space that people think belongs to cars. And that's where the conflict really comes from. They're in my way. In the southeast suburb of Pakenham in Melbourne, IT manager Robert Clark is getting ready for his morning cycle to work. I can see your eyes lighting up when you talk about it. How does it make you feel? Oh, it's great. It really makes you great. happy. It makes yeah. you happy, doesn't it? Yep. You're tearing up talking about your love of cycling. <laughs> yeah. Cycling is his life. But less than three months ago, it was almost the death of him. Talk us through that moment right there. You're sprawling on the ground, the bike's still under the car. Yeah. It's the second time for me, hit and run. The thing about this street that just blows my mind is that it's not a busy road. There's not anything holding this driver up. Mm. They've deliberately stopped, let you go past, and then run straight over you. Mm. Oh, my God. I could just see things flashing past me as I'm tumbling, and then I stopped. And it was just this realisation, I'm still here. The owner of the car handed herself in the next day, but she still hasn't been charged. Do you think they saw you as a human being? When you ask that question and you see that footage, no. I think the more that a group looks and acts different to you, the easier it is to dehumanise them. So when you're looking at a cyclist who just looks like a normal person in normal clothes, well, that's one thing, but oh, well, they're wearing a high-vis vest, they're wearing a helmet, they, heaven forbid they should be wearing Lycra. Now, that's different. That's not something I would ever do. That's not something any of my friends do. And it's a lot easier to put them in a separate category as less human than, than me and my friends. It is real. When, when I'm in the shorts and a T-shirt, people are just seeing me as a dude who's using the park to have a nice time. Whereas as soon as they see the Lycra guy, they just see, like, s someone that they feel antagonistic towards. So what do you think when you see them? What goes through your head? I just think stupidity comes to mind, but it's more arrogance. Queensland truckie Craig Munyard has been driving trucks for 40 years, and he's hated cyclists for every single one of them. And he lets them know every chance he gets. Right, so you give them a big beep in the truck? Yeah, yeah, I'll go, do that, like that, just to scare the crap out of them, say. What sort of reaction do you get? Some go, F off, mate. <laughs> right, and does that escalate? <laughs> no, no, I just thought, oh, oh, you've been told, that's it. So it's the big groups of cyclists that you find most frustrating? They ride in tandem sort of thing. So they're taking up twice the space and um, means the car's got to go into oncoming traffic in single lane roads uh, to get it sorted, basically. So um, uh, to get around them, which could cause incidents at higher speed with the vehicle. Craig's argument is that selfish cyclists can bring it upon themselves. But Professor Delbosk's study found drivers are often equally at fault. Hostility that can quickly escalate. I can't see you at all. Open your eyes. One in 10 drivers admitted to deliberately cutting off a cyclist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why I don't ride a bike around. I don't feel safe. Shut your mouth before I smack you in the mouth. Why does it make people so angry that they would commit 
acts of violence. We've lost the ability to be patient. You know, you're going to get there two minutes later if you just go slow and, you know, let the cyclist pass. There was a time Louise Brand cycled this road with the man she loved for four decades, her husband, David. We had a great life, it was perfect. So he was the avid cyclist to begin with and then he got me hooked on it as well. But Louise hasn't gone near a bike in years. Not since David encountered a vengeful motorist on this very spot in 2018. We were nearly home and David's chain came off his bike. He said to me, oh, look, you go ahead, catch up with everyone else. Um, I'll just put my chain back on and then I'll catch you up. I cycled ahead. I kept waiting for him to catch me up and then he never caught me up. Witnesses have told Louise what happened next. Very large old ute going at speed, 100 kilometres an hour, um, past him very, very close. David, who didn't suffer fools gladly, gave him the finger. Then, half a kilometre up the road, the driver of the ute was waiting for him. A witness saw what happened next. She did see this large man coming at David in the middle of the road with his hands up. David was riding about 30 kilometres an hour when the driver stepped out in front of him. Apparently he was telling him to stop, I want to talk to you. And then David came off the bike. David's on the ground with massive head injuries and this man had only a scratch on his leg. Her husband was rushed to hospital. He was in ICU in a coma for two weeks before Louise gave doctors permission to turn off his life support. I had to say goodbye. The children came and that was hard. Um, for them to say goodbye to their father. Uh, because of the actions of an angry driver? Because of the actions of an angry driver. He was charged with passing too close to a cyclist on the road. He was given a fine and loss of demerit points on his licence. Wow, that's it? That was it. You wanted him locked up, didn't you? I wanted him locked up. Are there people in this town that are open about hating cyclists? Definitely. There were people on anti-cycling Facebook groups... Yes. ..cheering at the death of your husband. Yes, yes. That's sick. Yes, yes. Australia has a pretty poor track record for safety for cyclists. I think there's a perfect storm. If somebody's got dehumanising beliefs about cyclists and they're prone to road rage, um, you see somebody do the wrong thing or they cut you off, the, the, the rage comes up and you want to teach them a lesson, to school them to never do that again to you or anyone else. But it's particularly dangerous when it's against a cyclist. And it's not just Australia. In the UK, the Lycra Wars have waged for years. I want to go to you. And it's seen a very public feud erupt between the two Jeremys. England's number one petrol head, Jeremy Clarkson. You're sweaty, you smell. Look at him. How much has he contributed to the economy today? Nothing. And London's most famous cyclist turned video vigilante, BBC presenter, Jeremy Vine. What are you doing? Let's not have a Jeremy Vine moment out there where he films some poor woman who he's inconvenienced and then she has to go to prison as a result. What's your problem? Bicycle. What's your problem? They can all fuck off. All of them. I asked Spotlight reporter, UK-based Sarah Greenhog, to sit down with Vine, a man who took up cycling to get fit, not fat. Jeremy? Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Good to see you. Thank you for doing this for us. <laughs> Pleasure. Did you ride here? I did, yeah. However, what he thought would be a pleasurable pastime turned into a war. Oh! Right, what's going on? What's going on? What are you doing? 
I suddenly realised I was in danger, mortal danger. And I just, I've got to admit, I got a bit angry about it. I thought, why should I be threatened by drivers all day long? Enraged by mouthy drivers and dangerous behaviour, Vine decided to strap on the GoPros and go public with his footage. Every day I leave the house like, you know, a Navy SEAL dressed to kill bin Laden. I mean, I'm wearing <laughs> so much gear, cameras and, you know, a flak jacket and everything, just to get to work. <laughs> and it's not right. And I've shared my experiences on, on social media and I find that cyclists everywhere are saying, why is it so dangerous for us? It must be the drivers. The drivers must hate us. Oh. Hell. Naming and shaming London's worst drivers. They need to understand that if they pass me close or they're on their phones, they will be reported and they will get fined. But why is that up to you? You'll report a crime if you see one, right? If you see some burglar climbing in through someone's front window, you'll ring the police. I'm just doing the same. <laughs> and I think it's gradually making the road safer. Let's watch some of your videos. Oh my God, okay. No. What the hell am I supposed to do? This is a cycle lane. This is a cycle lane. You can't stop here. The thing is, people are very angry. Just because you can travel at 140 miles an hour in your metal box with airbags and a coffee cup holder doesn't mean you should. Well, Take your time. Wait for us. Let us enjoy our lives. Jeremy, what do you make of the term lycra rage? Well, this is, we're now in the short skirt territory, aren't we? Which is, which is women being told not to wear short skirts because it makes them unsafe at night. And the same argument is being used with cyclists is, please don't make these angry, toxic drivers any more angry by wearing bright colors or lycra because they may not be able to control their cars. We don't care what drivers think, we just don't want them to kill us. Back in Australia, some have emulated Vine by weaponising their bikes with cameras. Cameron Frewer had two passions, his family and cycling. So what was your most favourite part about riding with Dad? You have to go on the pavement. Um, just being together as a family. You know, they, they do still think of their dad. Um, and riding was such a passion for Cameron. You know, that's what riding is to us. It's all about Cameron. As a cyclist filming his daily encounters of Lycra Rage, it was almost as if Cameron knew his days were numbered. He knew the day would come. He always said it's not a, a matter of if, it will be when. Every day, Cameron posted these videos of his experiences on Queensland's most dangerous roads, spreading his message, drive safe, pass wide. His passion for cycling was so big and that message of drive safe pass wide was so big for him that it didn't stop him from going out. And he did every day. He was, he feared for his life. In the cruelest twist, in 2018, Cameron was killed by the very type of driver he was trying to warn others about. Drive safe pass wide. We are that much closer to getting this etched on our landscape. Kath has now taken up Cameron's cause, campaigning to get his precious four words written into law. Drive safe, pass wide. This is what Cam's dream was, I guess, to make the world a, sorry, to make the world a better, safer place for all of us to live in. And that's why, you know, he did it for his kids. The war on our roads and the rage against Lycra is deadly serious and seriously deadly. It needs to stop, but can it? 
Do you think we'll ever find peace on our roads? That's a dream. No, we won't. No? No. Bit of a pipe dream? Absolutely. There'll always be conflict? There'll always be someone out there. But from Louise, another view. This shouldn't be an impossible dream. Because if nothing else, her husband's death shouldn't be for nothing. So do you think we'll ever find peace on our roads? Uh, look, I hope so. I don't know for me personally. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic that we can. It'd be great if we could. Do what you want to do, be what you want to be. Maybe this will be an agent for change. You know, going into this interview, everybody said to me, what's she like? And do you think she did it?